intelligent design from David Gelertner's essay, the evidence suggests to Meyer, who's seated with us today, that an intelligent designer must have been responsible. I can't accept intelligent design as Meyer presents it. Close quote. You also have seated next to you David Berlinski, who has been, who has, this is David, who has said that his attitude toward intelligent design, and I'm quoting him, is warm but distant. It's the same attitude that I display toward my ex wives. <laughs> so, so you have one man who can't accept it, another man who definitely wants to keep his distance. <laughs> At least Meyer out. So, so well, I don't know. You want to start the easier case? Try to convince David? Tell us, what, tell us what intelligent design is that distinguishes it from some kind of effort to sneak God in by some back door. Sure. Uh, the intelligent but, design... But parenthetically, yeah, like just yeah, one word. Yeah. That's definitely not Steve's intention. In, in this book, in Intelligent Design, it's not a way to bring in a theological argument. It is a scientific approach, purely and absolutely valid, scientifically. One can agree with it or disagree with it, but one doesn't have to reject it insofar as theology making an illegal move, because that's not what he's doing. That's not what you're... Yeah, Good. Let me just sketch the argument sure. briefly, and then we can just discuss it. Um, the, the, the big discovery of the 1950s and 60s was that the DNA molecule encodes information right. in a roughly digital or alphabetic or typographic form. This why, do you, was, why do you use the term digital? Well, because in computer science, we have characters, you know, zeros and ones. I see. I see. This, this, was, this is Crick, 1957. It's the sequence hypothesis. He realized that the, the information in DNA, or the, the, the chemical subunits of DNA called nucleotide bases, were functioning like alphabetic characters in a written text or like the zeros and ones in a section of computer code. It, that is to say, it's not, it wasn't their chemical properties that gave them their function, but rather their specific arrangement in accord with an independent symbol convention, which was later explicated in the form of what we call the genetic code. So we had genetic text functioning according to a code. So it really As, was a pure, it was, it was pure information. It, it, this is a genuine information storage system. Crick, by the way, was a code breaker in World War II. So this is a fascinating is an application of the information science system of molecular biology. Now what we, this is, and this is the argument that I make, is that what we know from experience is that information, whether we find it in a hieroglyphic inscription or a paragraph in a book or a information embedded in a radio signal or in a section of computer code, whenever we find information and we trace it back to its ultimate source, we always come to a mind, not a material process. And what I do in the book in Darwin's Doubt and my prior book, Signature in the Cell, is show that these uh, undirected evolutionary mechanisms that have been proposed as an explanation for the origin of information fail for various reasons. We've talked about the reason the Darwinian mechanism fails because it can't search the space when it's so vast. The, the odds are overwhelmingly against it. So if we, if we, from a materialistic evolutionary standpoint, don't have any explanation for the origin of the information that's necessary to build new biological form. And yet we do know from our uniform and repeated experience, which is the basis of all scientific reasoning, of a source of information, of a cause of the origin of information. That, that cause is intelligence or mind. And so what I've argued in both Darwin's Doubt and Signature in the Cell is that what we're seeing in life is evidence of the activity of a directing mind in the history of life. David Berlinski, to quote the old saying, if you see a turtle on a fence post, you know it didn't get there by itself. Look around you. There's intelligence behind this creation we inhabit. Yes? That's an easy one for a man like you, yes? I guess. Um, you're not leaving me much to chew with. Um, not much to You are a contrary man. Argument. What do you mean? Well, I don't know. I mean, look, intelligence in the world, intelligence behind the world. Uh, I'm relying on really you to answer like this objection. Whatever he comes up with, you're going to be the one who answers, so get ready. Meanest kisses at famine prices. Uh, it doesn't really, in my point, from my point of view, it doesn't really give us much. It's not yet a theory. I'm certainly prepared oh, to say see. there's a lot of intelligence manifest in the world, but at the same time, I think that doesn't really. Oh, it's a tautology to you. It's we, not a tautology. Well, look at this. It's information. Yes, it's information. Uh, that's pretty good. Yeah, <laughs> that's pretty good. Yeah, it's information. I recognize that information in some loose sense, maybe Shannon's sense, maybe a, a more elegant formulation of information theory, but. Uh, I'm much more persuaded by something that leads to a strong 
counterintuitive claim. For example, that the information is embedded in a topology in a certain way that makes it inevitable that certain life forms will emerge. That would be an interesting conclusion. And for a time, I thought there was such a, uh, a mathematical construction. I don't think my confidence was entirely well-founded, but it was a good idea. But just to say that the world is charged with the grandeur of God, I could have said that before thinking about biology. It is. That's true. David Galerentner, I'm quoting your essay again. If there was an intelligent designer, what was his strategy? How did he manage to back himself into so many corners, wasting energy on so many doomed organisms? What was his purpose? And why did he do such a slip, slipshod job? Why are we so disease prone, heartbreak prone, and so on, close quote. But aren't you setting a pretty high stand? Aren't you saying, in effect, either Stephen Meyer can explain all the mysteries of the human heart, or he's not allowed to say anything? That is to say, the difference between a purely materialistic view that all that we see around us came about purely as a matter of chance, and Stephen's view that there is intelligence, however little we can say about it, however little we understand what we mean by that, that's still a fundamental finding. Uh, the question is whether the world around us that you're pointing at meets your standard of intelligence. Uh, whether, whether the design that we see is in fact an intelligent design or a total mess. When I look at the world at large, I see a mess. When I look at the mind of man, I see a worse mess. I see uh, a creature uh, as likely to do bad as good, or more likely. Um, I see um, many creatures who are, who are fated to die out without uh, leaving any contribution that we can associate with value, not even becoming oil or something like that. I don't look at I don't look at the world as we know it as more likely the result of intelligence than random playing around, than just random taking your chances. Think if you took your chances, you, you'd come up with a mess like the world. You 